The Boeing 747 It's considered one of the most successful airliners alongside the Boeing 777. Not only is the double-decker known for its unique hump, but also for how the plane revolutionized air travel as we know it today. The 747 is a complex piece of engineering which became an icon of the modern age. It first flew commercially in 1970 and it was designed to have a capacity of 150% greater than the Boeing 707 and it had the passenger capacity record for 37 years, now second to only the Airbus A380. You see the 747 was expected to become obsolete after 400 sales. However, production surpassed 1,000 aircraft in 1993 and by April 2018, 1,500 plus aircraft had been built. The first 747-100s were built with six upper deck windows, with three on each side to accommodate upstairs lounge areas, as at the time flying was associated with luxury. Later in the 747-100's lifespan, airlines began to use the upper deck as a seating area for premium passengers. So Boeing launched the 10-window version of the aircraft. There was no 747-100 freighter, however many were converted after their passenger lifespan was complete. So, in total, 167 747-100s were built. The next 747 model to be created was the 747-SR. This was Boeing's answer to requests from Japanese airlines who required a high-capacity aircraft to serve short-haul domestic routes. The 747-SR was a short-range 747-100 with lower fuel and greater payload capacity. In early versions, up to 498 passengers could be carried, and later on this was extended to 550 passengers. Due to the aircraft lifespan being determined by flight cycles, the amount of time it takes off and lands, if the aircraft was to operate more than twice per day, it would need to have a higher flight cycle rating. The 747SR could handle 52,000 flight cycles, compared to the 747-100's 24,600 flights. 29 of these aircraft were ordered and delivered. The 747-200 was the next major model of the 747, which featured more powerful engines and an increase in the maximum takeoff weight, and a greater range than the 747-100. The early 200s retained the 3 window upper deck, however most contained 10 windows on each side. With a full passenger load, range started from 9,300 km and it increased to 11,000 km with later engines. The Combi model could carry freight in the rear section of the lower deck through a side door, where a partition separated passengers and cargo. It could carry 238 passengers in a free class configuration with an extensive cargo capacity. Conversion was offered, as a result, KLM converted 10 of their 747-200s to the 747-200M Combis. In total, 393 200s had been built, of which 225 were passenger variants, 73 were freighters, 13 convertibles, 78 combis and 4 military planes. After launching the 200 with Pratt & Whitney engines, Boeing announced it had made an agreement with General Electric to certify the 747 with CF650 engines to increase its efficiency and market potential. Later on, Rolls-Royce joined in the party and the Rolls-Royce 747 was launched with British Airways, perhaps the most iconic 747 operator alongside Pan Am. The last 200 model belonged to Iran Air, which was retired in May 2016, 36 years after it was delivered. Now, the 747-300 entered into service in 1983, and it featured the first major updates of the original 747-100 aircraft, including the extended upper deck, 25% less fuel burn per seat and 10% extra passenger capacity, the aircraft gained a complete makeover. By 1990, Boeing had delivered 81 300 aircraft, including the passenger, combi and short-range versions. The 300 was ordered by Swissair in 1980, who accepted delivery in March 1983. The 300M was the combi variant of the aircraft, with the rear of the lower deck dedicated to cargo. The 300SR was a short range of the 747 dedicated to the Japanese domestic market. Japan Airlines operated the aircraft with 600 seats between Tokyo and Okinawa. The 300 freighter however was never built, but Boeing offered conversions from the year 2000. 
81 of the aircraft were delivered in total and some are still in service today, despite many being replaced by the 400 model. These include Japan Airlines and Saudi Arabian Airlines. Qantas operated the aircraft until the 29th of December 2008, where it flew from Melbourne to Los Angeles via Oakland. Now let's talk about the 747 400, which is perhaps the most iconic aircraft of all time. It was announced in 1985 and it had six feet wingtip extensions, tail fuel tanks, a new interior, and many more. The passenger variant included a stretched upper deck known as the SUD. It was twice as long as the standard upper deck. The extended range freighter entered service in October 2002. The next month, the passenger version of the ER entered service with Qantas, the only airline to ever order the passenger version of the 747-400 ER. Qantas uses the aircraft on its Melbourne to Los Angeles and Sydney to San Francisco flights, which are too long to be operated by the standard 747-400. The 400 is an improved version of the 300 with increased wingspan, winglets, revised engines and a glass cockpit that removes the need for a flight engineer. The 400 passenger version features a stretched upper deck like the 300 as a standard feature. In 1989, Qantas flew the 400 non-stop from London to Sydney, a distance of 18,000 kilometers in 20 hours and 9 minutes. Although this was a delivery flight with no commercial passengers or freight on board and using special jet fuel produced by Shell. The production of the passenger version of the 747-400 officially ceased on the 15th of March 2007. The last four of the 400s on order were cancelled by Philippine Airlines which were converted to the 777-300ER. The last airline to order the 400 was China Airlines in November 2002 with the last passenger 747-400 constructed in 2005 and delivered in April of that year. Now, the 747-8 is perhaps the most debated 747 model. Its success was predicted to be limited, however, it hasn't performed too badly. Seven early 400 customers, including British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Qantas and Lufthansa, formed a group to consult Boeing on features of the aircraft. It included an even more stretched upper deck and gained 150 orders in total and it's still in production. However, I doubt any more orders will be placed as the 777-10X could replace the 747. Now the 747-8 comes in two variants, the Intercontinental and the 747-8 Freighter. The Freighter has gained 79 orders while the Intercontinental has only 74 orders, of which 8 are business jets, 19 for Lufthansa, 10 for Korean, 7 for Air China, and 2 for the US government which will be used as the new presidential aircraft. The freighter however has 28 orders from UPS and 14 from Cargo Lux and Cathay Pacific, followed by lower amounts from other airlines. Now the 747-400 freighter was a popular plane, carrying half of the world's air cargo in its day. However, the Dash 8 freighter is simply not as efficient as other freighters like the 777 and the 767, which are both twin-engine aircraft. The Dash 8 features raked wingtips rather than winglets, similar to the 777-200 and 300 and also the 787 Dreamliner. The GENX is the only engine available for the 747-8 and these are the same engines that are available for the 787. However, you should take into account that the 787 has only two engines and the 747 has four. Now, the future of the 747 doesn't look good. The 777X series will feature a capacity almost high as the 747, but much more efficient. The 747 is becoming obsolete as point-to-point -point travel begins to take over from the hub-to-spoke model of aviation. But there is one thing that is certain the 747 will be around for many years to come. Thank you so much for watching this Boeing History Timeline video. Don't forget to join our Discord server using the link below for video sneak peeks, the latest news and discussions with other aviation enthusiasts. You can also get a shout out in my next video by joining and entering the competition which is mentioned in the announcements channel. Remember captains, take a look at avgeek.news to learn more about the 747 in more detail. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next Boeing History Timeline video.